take the BS if we have the votes. But until then, you're going to have to find compromise. And again, I think that Sanders has proved with the American Rescue Plan, what was Build Back Better and, and you know became a lesser than package with the IRA bill, proves that they have been able to work together. Biden and Klain have had a relationship with Bernie and company that has moved the agenda forward. It's that simple. All right, um, Josh, do we have um, our good friend MTC ready to go? Ah, fantastic. Okay. Again, folks, a man from the 206. He is the Renaissance man of the Jeff Santos Show. He is uh, the executive director of Democracy Watch News. He is MTC. Mark Taylor Canfield. Can you see me? Can you feel me? Can you hear me? <laughs> all right, yeah, all right. That's a championship jam. I got a tiny oh, little guitar here. I borrowed it from my marionette, so I just wanted to show it off. It has little lights you can put on it, so when you play it, the, the lights blink inside, and it lights up. It's kind of right. cool. But anyway, enough for the guitar stuff. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I took you, off Jeff? the sport coat for you, man. I'm doing well. And, you know, we survived fascism. That's a great thing. I think so. I mean, unfortunately, or fortunately, I was at a great art event last night. Uh, our great rock photographer friend, Steve Gilbert, here in Seattle, had another one of his fantastic art walk parties. So uh, I think cool. Juliana, they're a little bit sleep deprived. So I'm fi probably feeling a little bit like you did the day after the election, <laughs> but I'm hanging in there. I got my urban mate tea here. And I also, I made a little documentary. I'm making these little documentaries about Seattle, about the sort of art and, and music and cultural scene here. So I will be putting those up at YouTube pretty soon, but I'm the guy now with a camera at all of these events, interviewing the artists and the musicians and sort of trying to cover all the things that, typical media doesn't cover, you know, what, what makes Seattle right. special, what really alive and vibrant. It's not what you'll see in the corporate news. You know, it's what happens no, no, in the not club. at all. Yeah, the the, besides yeah. throwing a fish at the uh, Pike's market there, it's a lot more to Seattle than just that. I can tell you, um, having spent some time there, even if it was 25 years ago, Hey, I must tell you, um, I was really glad to hear that, um, the Democratic Party, as I was outlining in, in the lead up to your segment, um, you know, kind of following Bernie Sanders. That's great. You know, and again, uh, you know, we had the situation here with Ed Markey, kind of the more of a, you know, middle of the road Democrat with great on the environmental issues. But now he's as progressive as his counterpart, Elizabeth Warren, uh, you know, as progressive as uh, almost as progressive, not quite as Bernie Sanders. Um, but, you know, he's he's uh, connected with AOC who I think is going to have to play a more prominent role. Uh, and, you know, yesterday we interviewed Ryan Grimm of The uh, uh, the Intercept and of uh, a Point Counterpoint on the Hill. And, you know, he was saying that, you know, I think it's to be determined yet, but more than likely she's going to take a bigger role. And then Bob Kuzak, also of the Hill, said that, um, you know, people are talking about her, uh, you know, maybe running for Senate in 2024. So I think... That's great because, you know, we don't have, you know, the exact replica of a younger version of Bernie Sanders. But in people like uh, uh, AOC and, and now Summer Lee and, and this Miss Ramirez in Illinois, you know, we're moving forward. And I think that's a great thing. And I'm glad that Seattle and, and Washington State is moving in that direction. You have mentioned before the possibility of our my uh, representative in Congress and friend Pramila Jayapal running for the U.S. Senate. So I would not put that out of the picture because that's a possibility at some point that she might decide yeah. to move in there. I think plus, you know, c considering the fact that she has an incredibly safe seat. So, oh, by the way, I want to announce this, Jeff, and, you know, this is breaking news. Pramila Jayapal won another election with 80 percent of the vote. Big news, <laughs> right? No, people here just ignored it. They didn't even know she was running. I don't even think she spent a mo any money on her campaign. Literally, she has a safe seat. So, uh, so someone else could take that seat that she inherited basically from Jim McDermott. So I think someone else could take that seat who would be a safe bet. Maybe somebody like Shama Sawant. That would be interesting. And then move Pramila yeah. up into the, just increase the power of the, the women of color from Washington State, which I'm sure they would really Amen. appreciate. 
And yeah, and I, yeah, I, I mean, because that would that would really give you a progressive agenda, you know, in 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 Congress. Uh, and it's just only only so much as Sawan can do. Now, if she runs from mayor, maybe that's another avenue for her. But if she doesn't, I think that she can only do so much in that city council world. So I think it's time for her. And again, if that means that uh, Cantwell has to retire, I mean, she's been there for a while. I don't really think that, um, you know, frankly, we would miss her that much. And um, people of, of Washington State, I mean, obviously better than the Republican ever would be. But um you know, I, I think having a, a Jayapal with a Murray there, that would be a really good dynamic duo. And and having Sawant as the congresswoman, uh, that's good, too. And, you know, Patty has been there for 30 years, so she is going to retire at some point. So some younger, you know, soccer mom and tennis shoes or something is going to have to take her place. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it's a woman because, I've, as I've mentioned to you before, uh, female Democratic uh, Party candidates uh, poll really well in Washington State. They're usually about 20% ahead of any male Republican. By the way, Kim Schreier did win her uh, seat in Congress for re-election, so we're really happy to hear about that. Um, just to give you a quick lowdown, if you want, um, Washington State uh, is like this, Jeff, after the election. After the dust settled, we're still counting votes. In some uh, places, 70% of the votes have been counted. But check this out. 10,000 people, uh, at least, registered to vote on the day of the election. So that's good. I mean, that's another example of good. the kind of laws that Greg Palast, what I think would probably support, although I can't speak for him, is, you know, same day registration, same day voting, mail in voting, this idea of locking up the drop boxes like they did in Florida and buildings that are inaccessible. Ridiculous. Here in King County, Martin Luther Please King understand. County, Washington, the drop boxes were available 24 hours a day, seven days a week from October 21st until November 8th, election day. And then at eight o'clock, the elections officials were there to shut down the voting. No one was allowed to vote after 8 p.m. But I felt very uh, comfortable with my state's election system. We have a new secretary of state, Democrat, the first Democrat, believe it or not, in Washington state to hold that office since, you know, for the last 60 years. And the first Asian, uh, Asian American Pacific Islander, AAPI person to hold that um, position. So Steve Hobbs won. We're all happy to hear about that. I know Tina Podladowski, the chair of the Washington State Democratic Party, whom I was able to interview, was very happy about that. So Steve is there. We're safe. I don't think we're going to find any more people, as many people, at least in Seattle or Washington State, being purged from the voter rolls because Podolowski told me that 137 names had been purged uh, in, in the last uh, couple of decades through, or actually since the early 2000s for, by Republican um, separatists of state. So that's good. This is the situation here. The Democrats are going to retain the majority in the House and the Senate in our state legislature by thin margins. That's fantastic. The state is, the state is well, still... Well, you know, I want to ask you about, about you something that we don't usually talk about, and that's the right wing in Spokane and, and that part of the of the state. You know, it's a, it's a great state, yeah. particularly in Seattle and the coastal line of Olympia there and, and so forth. But, um, you know, there is that element you know, that's, that's there in Idaho nearby and it's there in Eastern Oregon. It's there in, you know, in Montana too. Give me your thoughts. They're a small group, but you know, they have a lot of power. A lot of them are, you know, carrying weapons. How is that being handled and, and how does Inslee deal with all that, you know, uh, on the extreme right in, uh, in the other pocket of, uh, Washington state, the, the right pocket um, of the geography there. Well, the state is still split. It's even split by congressional districts. So you have two big districts, one Spokane, one uh, Yakima, and they cover huge geographic areas of the eastern part of the state where the population is pretty low. Uh, our poli local politicians like Jay Inslee, they're from the west side of the state where the politics are very right. progressive. So he doesn't pull any punches um, challenging the right wing. He, he doesn't try to coddle them or speak to them like Joe Biden does sometimes. He just speaks for what he believes and he thinks that they're wrong. So he'll make that very clear. Right. However, <laughs> uh, right wing really liked Tiffany Smiley. There were a lot of signs in eastern Washington uh, out in their I know, in people's yards with her name on it. There were also some of those signs, Jeff, in some very wealthy neighborhoods on the east side of Lake Washington in areas like Mercer Island and Bellevue, where a lot of what very wealthy people live who tend to be more conservative politically. And so they right. also 
we're backing her. So unfortunately, they're gaining. Was she a denier too, by the way? Excuse me. Was she an election denier as well? Uh, Yeah, Trump supporter Smiley. Yeah. Yeah, she was she was suckering up to try to get an endorsement from Trump. His PAC did support her, and she got an official endorsement from Mike Pence, the former vice president. So uh, she basically represents this backlash against what people think of as the, uh, I guess, the West Coast establishment here, you know, the the west side of, of Washington state, where, yeah, that's heavily populated. There are metropolitan areas around Puget Sound, which um, uh, which have more population than the east side of the state. So they feel like they're not getting uh, as, as much representation. So the state is still split. The Democrats are still in control of the state legislature. We have a state a Democrat as secretary of state. So all in all, uh, they were able to survive this, you know, so-called red wave. But I wanted to mention this, and this goes right back to what Professor Professor John Shelton was saying on your program earlier about economic security. It really seemed to me that the first few campaign ads that the Democrats in Washington State ran and their friends, these PACs, were very a little bit confusing, and the messages were a little bit mixed and and hard to decipher. And I, I would watch one of their commercials, and I would think, what are they trying to say? But towards the end of the election, they got smart and listened to people like Bernie Sanders and started talking about Social Security and Medicare Economic and right wing extremism, yeah. and oligarchy. Yeah. You know, the one percent mm-hmm. yep. that the Republicans represent, and that um, really went well for them. It, I think it was. This is just my analysis. I'm not an official political consultant just a journalist out here, but there was 10% in the latest Seattle Times um, KING TV news poll just before the election, 10% undecided. And so that's why the Democrats were really worried. That's why they got panicky and brought in Vice President Kamala Harris to speak here and campaign for Murray and raise money for her. That's why they brought Elizabeth, Senator Elizabeth Warren to town, which is probably the first time she's been here since she ran for president. And, you know, two very popular figures in uh, the city of Seattle and in Washington, at least this part of Washington state. So high level, they brought out the the big hitters, Jeff, if this is the World Series, you know, they put in their their starting lineup. So there they go. They're out raising money for Patty Murray. Everyone's really worried because she was polling at 49 percent and Smiley was polling at 41. But I what I believe happened is that the undecideds, which were 10 percent decided to go for Patty Murray. And I think it was largely because they adopted a Bernie Sanders style message, which was, hey, they want to come after your social security. Hey, they want to take out, take your Medicare. Hey, these people are all backed by billionaires and rich people who don't even right. represent you, right. 1%. And people understood. It was a very simple message. Somebody's trying to take advantage of you, get smart. And people did, and, and they did the right thing and, and reelected Patty Murray. So, and Schreier was reelected on her third um, that's her third reelection too. So yeah, we're still a pretty strong blue state, but we definitely have the red state, um, influence in, in Washington and they are getting stronger and getting more and more money, um, to back their cause and their ads are getting more and more crazy, but you know, that's, I guess what you can expect from them. Right. You know, I want to, I want to say something It's right in your, right in your Ballywick because it's, uh, in the world of music. I was disheartened to hear that uh, Miss Firework there, Katy Perry, uh, endorsed the Republican turned Democrat, Mr. Caruso, uh, in the race uh, for mass for mayor of Los Angeles. In a very tight race, Caruso, I think, leads by 500 votes or something. And they're still counting. We, some people believe that Bass will overcome this. But the reason I bring up this Katy Perry thing is that. You know, sometimes you really need to break it down to to voters that really don't understand politics. The Republicans are the bubblegum pop artists, whether you want to call Katy Perry, who had been active before. I think she was there for Hillary Clinton. Um, I think sometimes you may need to break it down that way because people understand that. They understand pop pop culture. They understand, you know, that Taylor Swift isn't exactly, you know, Bono or Bruce Springsteen. They understand that, you know, um, she's another pop star the last five more years and then no one will hear from her ever again. And and maybe there is a way to sort of communicate that message to people, again, who know more about Hollywood and more about music than they know about who was in the cabinet of Joe Biden. Jay Leno proved that point years ago. Mark, what about that? Well, I don't know. From the city where musicians tend to be politically active, just 
as part right. of their very nature. They don't even consider do, doing anything special. So that's a big difference from um, very uh, popular, wealthy rock stars who don't have to do it if they don't want to, because they're making plenty of money. They got a very secure lifestyle. They don't care. Um, Eddie Vedder could right. be the same way. I mean, but he's not. He cares. Well, no, I mean, they, I, they, they I'm not at all. I mean, I I love the rock stars, uh, rock people, or whatever the the U twos, the Eddie Vedders, the uh, the Springsteens, the the Bonos of the world. But there are other pop artists. If you remember Rod Stewart, you know, you know, and and that's how that song, you know, not going to play Sun City started, you know, with uh, Springsteen's guy there that played in the Sopranos. Um, I forget his name, um, the guitarist. And, you know, he started that whole thing, you know, not going to play Sun City in South Africa, you know, with Mandela. Not Mandela Barnes, but Nelson Mandela. And, you know, to me, that's sort of separated. Rod Stewart is a pop artist. He, he'll play because they paid him to play in South Africa, you know, during the late 80s, early 90s. And to me, that separates people who concern about, you know, people and political power and just human rights versus somebody who just plays for the buck as an example. That's why I'm trying to make that division because there are great yeah. artists. Majority of them are, but if you can explain that, you know, it, people will understand bubble gum pop culture versus those who really care about community, you know, like, like veterans yeah. with, I know or Tom Morello. Tom Morello from Rage Against yeah, the Machine. Yeah. He's, you know, sure. I've met him several times in Seattle. When he came, he came up here during the protests against the WTO, uh, the World Trade Organization. He and Chris Novoselic, the bass player from Nirvana, and Jeff mm -hmm. uh, Gio, uh, Bello, Jello Biafra started this band called the WTO Band. And I remember people go. were trying to go to their show downtown, and the police kept telling everybody that the show had been canceled. The show had been canceled. And meanwhile, the the band is downtown at the club, wondering why no one's showing up. So yeah, I kept telling this one, you know, people, because I, you know, as a kid, I, I loved you know those musicians. So I was like, yeah, man, I want to be there. And uh, yeah, I kept arguing with the police. I gotta go. This is an all ages show, man. I need to get down there. They're like, nope, you're not going. They're, this downtown is under curfew or something like that. And meanwhile, the band is down there waiting. So what they did was they postponed the show, I think, for one day or something, and then did it in the middle of the tear gas and everything that was happening the next day. Because just like the Black Lives Matter protests, those protests went on for, I guess, seven days in a row, basically. And then, you know, we think Seattle is very politically active now. But in one of these uh, research projects I did with this group called the Committee for Local Government Accountability, we found that there were like 180 protests in Seattle that year. So that was the year 2000. 1999 to 2000 in Seattle was, you know, like it was like the verge of the revolution. The governor was calling yeah. an emergency and the mayor was That's declaring right. an emergency. And tear gas was flying every day. And people like Michael Moore were here and right. uh, Ralph Nader. You trying to Pat Buchanan uh, and environmentalists on the same march on WTO. Yeah, steel in, workers marching the with uh, the steel workers, big, you know, uh, macho steel workers marching with the uh, Greenpeace environmentalists in the turtle suits, right. you know. Right, exactly. Together. Exactly. It's a, it's a great, great way to, to, to come together. Um, they do show that scene corporate America. In the, that movie Battle in Seattle with Shirley Theron and Woody Harrelson and all those guys. So I got to meet when they came to Seattle. That movie shows a scene where the they made that decision where the steel workers said, no, we're marching with the turtles. <laughs> and that changed something. <laughs> yeah. It did. That, that created a union. Still that created Leo a labor Gerard and those guys for years were leadership. fantastic. They still are under under different leadership. Hey, I just got about a minute here. Seahawks, Seahawks, Seahawks. Gino is, is uh, leading the way. Man, this team is blowing my mind. They're playing in uh, the UK before a huge crowd. Oh, wow. That's right. Tom Brady. Oh, my God. This is like a huge, <laughs> huge super game with the best quarterback in the history of the game versus the this got new quote new guy who's been around for eight years uh gino smith so it's a showdown hey, I got it's like a I western got 15 showdown. seconds man thank hey, you check out democracy Watch news check out my stuff at youtube my music there and instagram i love you all thank take care jeff have a great weekend you rock peace man i took off the sport coach just for you uh, i want to thank uh, our great team uh and thank mtc of course always uh Freddie, uh, Josh, and uh, Dan, all the great work down there in Boca. 
Folks, keep on fighting. Have yourself a good weekend. Keep on fighting peacefully. My name is Jeff Santos, and right now it's my time to say I'm going to go.